Hi, everybody. We're in the middle of a series called Everything Everywhere, and it's all about the stuff that can sometimes feel overwhelming. Stress, like our hearts race, our thoughts race, and our emotions race. It feels like everything is everywhere. The goal of this series is to discover everyday ways that we can look for God when we're overwhelmed by stress and worry. So we're gonna start with a little bit of a personal story. I mean, I gotta ask you this. Have you ever been in one of those situations where you feel like, is this my real life? Like it feels so bizarre, so ridiculous, so overwhelming that you're like, wait, wait, what? Is this actually happening? Well. Okay, so for me, this happened a couple of years ago. I was just like driving down the highway um, and I'm like pushing on the gas. I'm probably going, we'll say I'm in the speed limit going 60. And I'm like, my car is like slowing down. Even though I'm pushing on gas, there's traffic everywhere. I get over to the side of the highway and I'm like, what's happening? I notice cop lights behind me and I'm like, okay. I, I eventually get out of the car and I walk kind of towards the cop car and I, I can look under my car and I'm like, is that? Fire? Like, is my car on fire? I turn to the cop and I literally say, um, I think my car's on fire. And he's like, yeah, that's why I was pulling you over. And we stand there about 20 feet away from my car and just watch the whole thing go up in flames. Like, let's just put some footage there. Cause I was just like, oh, this, this is really happening. I mean, it feels like everything is everywhere. Like traffic is like just racing by on one side of the median. There's like four lanes on the other side. My car is going up in flames. I'm standing next to a cop car. I'm like, what is happening? Next thing I know, this massive fire trucks come breezing down the other side of the median. These guys hop out of the fire truck, my car, they're just like the massive hoses. And it's like, oh, I'm just, I'm watching this happen in real life. And I was so out of it because I'm like, this, this is too much to even process to the point where I was like, what, who do I call? I mean, at the time I was living in Oklahoma city. I was hundreds of miles away from my family. I called my boss and was like, uh, my car is on fire on the side of the highway. So she shows up um, and I'm like, I don't know what to do. And she's like, you want to call your insurance? I'm like, yeah, that's a good idea. I call my insurance people, start giving them all the details. And they're like, what do I do? She's like, do you want to call the rental car place? Maybe it's like, oh yes, I need a car now. So I call the rental car place. She drives me to my apartment. We get there and I'm like, we can't get in because the garage opener is in the car that just burned. So she drives me back down the highway to my car. She jumps over the median. She grabs my uh, uh, car garage opener out of my car. We go back and I'm just like, I would not have known how to take the next step because I was so overwhelmed if she wasn't there. And then later that evening, my friend came over, um, Christy, and she brought like one of my favorite meals. And we just like chilled out and we're like, you know what? My car's on fire. This is okay, we're gonna figure this out. At some point I need to buy a new car. Um, I know it's a long story, but maybe one or two other details was months later, I had another friend who, or maybe a month later after my rental car ran out, she was like, you can just borrow my car until you can save up money to buy a car. I was like, great. Borrowed her car for a month and then still didn't have enough money to buy a car. I waited for another month and I had a friend who would pick me up every morning and drop me off every evening to take me to and from work. And so it just took a village of my friends to help me through this stressful season in life. It was ridiculous, but here's the deal, okay? Sometimes our solutions to stress really is other people, like it's another person. But I think we rarely think about other people when it comes to our stress. We, we rarely think about them being a part of the solution. I mean, there are probably a lot of reasons why, but I'm just gonna highlight a few. One is that we feel alone. Stress can be isolating. And whether we realize it or not, we've been taught most of our lives to just figure it out. We have this feeling that we need to just work harder or try harder or do it on our own, maintain our image. And even though it doesn't work for some reason, we keep doing that, like as if it's gonna solve the stress. I think another thing that we do is we have a tendency to pretend like we're doing better than we actually are. Maybe we try to impress others and put on an act, or maybe we try to tell others and tell ourselves even, no, I'm fine, we're fine, it's, it's fine. I mean, it makes me think of another story, a time where I was like, okay, I have to be fine right now, but I'm really not fine. Um, I was speaking at this huge event. There were thousands of people everywhere. It was fantastic. It was a very fun experience. Um, but the problem was because I was speaking, I was obsessing and stressed about my content the night before, stayed up all night working and reworking the content. Only thing I had to eat in probably the last like 
18 to 24 hours were a couple of um, Celsius, like the energy drink. And so I think I had three to four energy drinks within a 24 hour period without any food. Imagine that feeling. And then being stressed at like, okay, I gotta deliver this content. There came a moment where I was like walking down the hallway, lots of people were congratulating me. And I was so grateful um, just to have moments of connection with all these people. but. There was this thing happening inside of me off of the caffeine and the stress and the lack of sleep where I was just like, uh, internally, I was like, I don't, I don't think I'm okay. I think I might be like overly stressed. This might be leading into maybe a panic attack. I don't know, but I turned to my friend and was like, I'm not okay. And they whisked me down the hallway around the corner and we like sat outside by some smelly dumpsters, but I just needed a second. And without a friend there to help me realize like, oh, I need to be like moved out of this moment. I don't know what I would have done. And for all those people who were saying hi to me, who I was smiling to and responding to, it wasn't like I was trying to intentionally lie or be fake with them. Um, it was just, easier to kind of manage that moment and, and trying to, I don't know, like just be real with myself. But the truth is a lot more was happening internally. You see, here's the thing. Dealing with stress can kind of be like this. Y'all, look, it's Ollie. I know, okay. But here's, here's the point. Ollie is just a prop for right now. But like, what if we walked around every day carrying our friend Ollie, right? But we maybe secretly didn't want anyone to see it. And we live our whole lives just like one-handedly, not paying attention to the thing that we should pay attention to and probably work through. I mean, we literally are just trying to hide everything that's happening. That would be exhausting after a while, right? I mean, yes, this is a silly example, but isn't that what we try to do with our stress sometimes? Okay, say bye to Ollie. We wonder if God can help. Sometimes we doubt if God can actually help us when we're dealing with stress. We're like questioning, does God care? Does God show up? And if God could help us, then what would God actually do? Listen, we get that it's no fun to feel overwhelmed by stress and worry, but it's also not a bad thing. It, it just means that you're human. Every person in this room deals with it. And what's cool is that the people around you can play a part in helping you deal with the stress in your life. The New Testament, the second part of the Bible, consists of the books that account for a time when Jesus walked the earth and beyond. But ultimately, whether it's an Old Testament or a New Testament book, they all point to Jesus. And one of Jesus' closest followers was a guy named John. He wrote one of the accounts of Jesus' life that we refer to as the Gospels. He records a time when Jesus had been beaten, tried, found guilty, and put on the cross to be crucified. Jesus knew that he was gonna die. I mean, talk about feeling like everything everywhere. And as if that wasn't enough, Jesus was worried about his mom. I mean, what would she do when he was gone? Who would take care of her? It says it like this. Standing near the cross were Jesus' mother and his mother's sister Mary, the wife of Clopas, and Mary Magdalene. When Jesus saw his mother standing there beside the disciple he loved, he said to her, Dear woman, here is your son. And he said to his disciple, Here is your mother. And from then on, the disciple took her into his home. We see two things from this encounter. One, Jesus leaning into another person. When everything was everywhere for Jesus, he turned to one of his closest friends. I mean, Jesus was concerned about what would happen to his mom when he died. I mean, if it was me, I'd be stressed. And in that moment, God used John to help take care of Jesus' family. This is amazing. And the second thing, the second thing is God actually using Jesus to save us from our biggest problem. You see, when sin entered the world, we turned away from God's perfect love, which broke our relationship with Him. That's when the narrative turned. God sent Jesus, who was the ultimate sacrifice. Jesus healed what was broken and showed us how good and how loving God is. Christianity is the only religion, the only solution, and the only aspect of spirituality that has nothing to do with what we humans can do or what we've done. It's all about who Jesus is, what he's done, and what he's made right. Like God was so good to us when he sent Jesus to rescue us from ourselves. It's a big theme throughout the whole Bible and throughout all of history. God uses other people to help us when we're stressed. The hugs, the texts, the smiles, the words of 
truth, words of encouragement, words of counsel, support, strength, and prayer. All of these, these are ways that God uses other people to help us when we feel like everything is everywhere. Okay, and here's another thing. Some of you may be thinking, yeah, maybe God uses other people to help me when I'm stressed, but it's other people that are the whole reason why I'm stressed. Yeah, maybe friend drama or a dating breakup is the cause of your stress. Or maybe something your mom said or your coach did is the cause of your stress. Or maybe being worried about what other people think of you is the cause of your stress. How can people be the answer to stress when often, let's be honest, they're the cause? I want you to look at this verse in the book of Proverbs. Fearing people is a dangerous trap, but trusting the Lord means safety. See, it's all about trusting the Lord. Like God knows all about us, yes, all about us, and He still loves us so deeply. We are loved, adopted children of God. And when we trust in that, and, and find our identity secure in that. We no longer fear what other people may say or think about us. Sure, some people will hurt us or stress us out, but we know that our safety is found in God. When we trust God, we can understand that God can use other people to come alongside us when we are stressed out. It's one of God's favorite ways to demonstrate God's love in our lives. So not only do we trust God, but we also begin to slowly open up and trust other people too. Like trusting God, trusting others is a way that you and I can grow in our faith every day. So in light of all that we've talked about today, here are two things that I would love for us to do. The first is this, and it may take a little bit of work for some of us, but it's to turn to others for help. See, God can use our friends, our families, our teachers, our small group leaders, um, our friends' parents, professional counselors, all kinds of other people. And I bet that there are people in your life who actually want to help. So maybe in the notes app of your phone, write down three people that come to mind. This is your action step for how you're gonna fight stress in your life. Like who are the people in your life that will show up for you and help you when you are stressed or worried? Maybe it's a coach, a grandparent, an aunt, an uncle, a trusted college student, a neighbor, a school administrator. I mean, this list could go on and on. Take a second, think of three people. It's powerful when people step in and help others carry their stress. I mean, you've seen it in movies and TV shows. Like think of the show where something goes terribly wrong and then the whole community comes out to help fix it or solve the problem or carry the stress. I mean, I can think of a TV show that I watch um, about soccer where one of the soccer players had this whole entire restaurant that was a very special um, place in the community and someone comes and destroys it. Well, spoiler alert, his friends show up and help restore the whole restaurant. I mean, there's broken glass everywhere, but they're sweeping it up and they're putting in new mirrors. There's maybe spray paint on the wall or all kinds of things, but they're cleaning it up and they all showed up to carry it with him, even though he wasn't expecting it. Like I said, it's powerful, but we don't just find it happening in TV shows and movies. We also see it in the New Testament. The Apostle Paul said it this way in a letter to one of the early churches. Carry each other's burdens, and in this way, you will fulfill the law of Christ. Carry each other's burdens. I mean, one of the ways that we can trust God is by trusting other people and helping each other when we feel the weight of everything everywhere. So that's the first thing. Trust other people, rely on other people, call your community to come around you. Okay, so here's the second thing you can do. Look for ways to help others. Yes, look for ways to help others. Wouldn't our lives feel a little bit less stressful if we all followed Jesus by helping each other out? What if we woke up every day and looked for ways to say, yes, Jesus, I will step in and I will help. Just like John was willing to take care of Jesus' mom, let's be willing to help take care of other people. Let's do what the Apostle Paul instructed when he said, carry each other's burdens. Maybe that means helping one of your parents or guardians clean up around where you live. Maybe that means helping one of your friends with a subject that they're struggling with in school. Or maybe it means showing up for one of your friends who's going through a tough time. I mean, even praying out loud with someone who is sick and hurting is a way we help carry burdens. What would it look like for you to show up this week for other people who are stressed? God uses other people to help us when we're stressed. This includes your small group and your small group leader. Each week, you get the chance to talk through stuff like this with people who not only want to help you, but who understand what it's like to feel like everything is everywhere. 
So maybe opening up to your group is a great first step for God to use others to help you when you're stressed. So as you head to small group, I want you to think about your answer to this question. What is one step, just one, that I can take to trust God with everything I'm worried about?